Howdy Chef Warrior, today I'm going to go through the 41 essential tools for your tool bag. I'm also going to cover my two bag system for working briefly. I'm also going to talk about tool kits, those kind of all-in-one kits that have a lot of this stuff in it. I'm going to give you my opinion of that, what you need to look out for if you're going to start there. Alright, let's get into it. Before we get into all 41 tools, I got a few weird ones in there, but we'll get to it. Uh, I want to talk about a couple things. One, first one being my two bag system for working. I uh, picked this up from my dad and I found, find it extremely helpful when working. So I have two tool bags here. This is my primary tool bag and my secondary tool bag. My primary tool bag, I keep loaded with all these tools or almost all of them. There's a few of them that I keep in here, but mostly I keep this empty. So this guy stays loaded with all of my tools so I can grab it and go. I don't have to think about where my essential basic stuff is. It's already loaded. Uh, so let me talk about this bag just for a second. I really like this as my primary bag and a few things about it. I've had several different tool bags over the years. This is my favorite. And not necessarily this brand. This is, although this is a great one, um, AWP brand, but more so just how it's designed. And by that I mean it is a stiff, structure. It's not a bag that collapses. So a non-collapsible, I think is what I've seen them call that uh, if you're searching online. So a non-collapsible bag, so it's got stiff sides. It's got a nice handle with some padding on it and it's got a divider. I've seen some that are just completely open inside. I like the one with the divider with some slots for your tools and a couple of places around the outside as well. So the key features there being the dividers inside and the stiff walls. That's what I like in my primary tool bag. I leave that one loaded up. This one I put a few like my impact driver and my gloves and mostly these items over here. I'll keep that in my secondary bag. So mostly it's empty except for a few items and I like to leave the space in there um, for any extra tools that I know I'm going to need for the job. I'll grab those real quick, throw them in my secondary bag, and maybe some screws or you know, whatever you might need. Um, but I leave a lot of space in here, and when I'm done with the project, I'll empty it out for the most part, you know, except those few items, um, so it's ready to load up for the next project. I find that a really great way to work. Second thing I want to get into was the tool kits. And by that I mean, and I'll show a picture here of a couple of different ones. A couple of things to look out for, and I grabbed, so my wife had one of these kits, so I grabbed a few tools to compare it. So here's what you need to look out for, if you've never seen these. Uh, they can be smaller than pictured, or they seem like they're big in the picture, but they're actually tiny. So I just wanted to show you, I have a few of those here, I just wanted to show you the difference in the size. So this, for example, is the kind of, the size of the hammer you get in one of these tool kits. <laughs> so, uh, now, not all these tool kits are sort of miniaturized like this one, but just to illustrate it so you can be aware of that. So again, like, you know, here's the tiny one that comes in those kits and here's a real. Um, you have some pliers. And here's one of the things I've noticed with a lot of these kits in that they're miniature. They're uh, also usually cheap, cheaply made. And one of the things I noticed is like the, the hinge, the screw that holds them together will often come apart and they become hard to work. They don't do a very great job, or if you're doing something that really got to crank down on, um, this thing can twist and bend. And anyways, so uh, just want to illustrate that. And like you know, this tape measure is super tiny, not very long. This is only six feet, and prone to breaking. Also, screwdrivers. You typically this is actually a good size screwdriver, but a lot of times you'll get you'll get tiny ones that are only that big. I would call this a medium size but you definitely want to have, besides, I mean, this is a good size, but you definitely want to have a bigger one around too. So just something to look out for in those kits is that everything can be smaller than you might expect, especially if you're just looking at like pictures on Amazon and everything sort of seems normal size, may not be. Now, that being said, I have found one from Craftsman that is full size and includes some good quality tools. So um, I'll put a picture of that here so you can see that. And, and I'm going to have links to, to the, the tools that I'm showing you and um, as many of these as I can find online. I've collected these over the years, but I assume we can probably find them online. And if so, I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out. 
Crafts in the Mimics, a great toolkit that includes real tools, you know, real sizes. So that is a good option if you can find, make sure they're, you know, a good brand. I wouldn't go with the cheap stuff on Amazon. I would go with a known brand like a Craftsman. I generally prefer the best. I generally prefer tools that will last me a lifetime and that are made in the USA when possible. Right, let's get into it. Number one, we have Torx set. So I find a lot of newer things are using these, but I wouldn't get it like this where they come out and they're individual. I would get one of these guys where they're all attached uh, so you don't lose them and you can quickly see um, the order of the sizes of them. Um, this is an Allen wrench. You definitely want a set of these, but again, I would get your Torx and your Allen wrench in a set like this where it's all connected together. All right, so that's number two. Um, number three, a Sharpie. Number four, pencil. Number five, eraser for that pencil. Number six, Stanley 99E retractable razor blade. Now, some guys like the ones that don't retract, and I get it, that is nice, it's simpler, uh, less prone to issues and less prone to accidentally going back in when you're using it. But I have children, I have four children, so I can't have sharp things like that, blades sticking out. So the Stanley 990, this is a great one. This is this uh, model specifically has been around forever. So that's a great one. I prefer the Stanley brand on that one. Uh, 25 foot tape measure. I like Stanley, so I've got a few Stanley tools, but I like 25 feet. I found that meets most of my needs. Rarely do I need more than that. All right, flashlight, headlamp. This is just a cheap energizer brand. Man, these things are amazing. It's like having a third arm because you don't have to hold the light. All right, let's get into a few weird ones that are fairly, probably the newest members of my tool bag. Scissors, titanium scissors though. Uh, and their snub nose, which I like, prevents me from poking myself for. Uh, keeps my children safe as well. Um, these things are awesome. I've cut all kinds of stuff that I probably shouldn't have with them and they have held up really nicely. This is a uh, Klaus, C-L-A-U-S-S. Klaus Titanium, these things are amazing. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of a weird thing to add in my tool bag uh, when I got them, but you know, I have found them to be one of the most useful things and I use it a lot. So these I highly recommend. All right, another kind of weird thing is a, this is a, let's see, two inch putty knife. This is a dollar or two in the paint section. This thing is super handy. Obviously you can do putty with it, but I use it to scrape all kinds of things like stickers and gooey stuff or just to clean things. This guy is really helpful and it's plastic so it won't, uh, generally won't scratch whatever you're working with. So that's a handy thing to have. Use it for all kinds of things other than putty. All right, the Stanley Snub Nose, I think they, how they refer to these things. Um, it has all the different you know, heads there and it's also rashing, which is awesome. I find it super handy. There's all kinds of times when uh, even my smallest screwdriver is too long and I just have a small space to work with. I go to this guy. I like it. I don't even know what number we're on. I lost count already. We're only like a third of the way through. Let's keep going. Next one up, need some work gloves, leather work gloves. I usually keep that in my secondary bag. What do we got? WD-40. You gotta have WD-40 to fix those squeaky things. Safety glasses, of course. Hammer. And, oh, this guy, yeah, this is another fairly recent one. This is a Tekton 30812 hammer, uh, and they make different sizes, but I recommend kind of this medium size. Really handy, especially when you're working on the car to bang on stuff to get it unstuck. <laughs> I was just using this on, uh, when I was changing the rear discs on my wife's car, the thing was rusted solid and I couldn't get it, so I banged on it for a long time with this guy and it broke loose. So banging on metal especially, this is handy. Banging on metal with a metal hammer? No bueno. Don't do that. Get you one of these guys. And they're cheap too. It's like, I don't know, 15 bucks or so. Next one up, a file. Metal file. Kind of any size, but you know, they make them bigger and smaller. This is kind of a medium one. Super handy to have around. Vice grips. This is, you know, the brand of vice grip. They invented the tool that, you know, we all call it a vice grip even if it's not by script brand, so I, they're great. They're now owned by Irwin, so that's why it has both on there, but these are, I think I got this in a two-pack, or maybe a three-pack, but I believe it was a two-pack. Uh, 
really handy to have both because there's just situations where this thing can get in there and this, these guys can't. Also, sometimes you need to lock two things down. So having both sizes is really handy. All right, we got some needle nose pliers. I've got a couple different sizes. Um, again, kind of the same thing. Sometimes big ones are, are better for bigger wires. Sometimes you can only get into the space with these small ones. So having a couple different sizes is awesome. These guys are really nice too. Spring-loaded tiny ones. Recommend that. All right. Crescent wrench, of course, you got to have this. This replaces, you know, like a whole set of wrenches. But generally when I'm working on the car, I like to get the real wrenches. Um, but this guy's good to have around if you don't want to carry around all of your wrenches. If you're going to be cutting any sort of boards, you need one of these guys. Let's go down here, get into our, our channel locks. This is channel lock brand channel locks. These are made in the USA. This is the 430 model. Again, you know, they have various sizes of these. I recommend the one right in the middle. Um, channel lock brand, I mean, these things will last you your lifetime. So that's why I like to buy the best. These are also channel locks, really great for cutting wires or metal. This is Klein Tools. This is kind of a heavy duty uh, electrical tool. Good for cutting, good for pulling, bending metal. If you're gonna do anything electrical around the house, replacing a fixture or um, fixing an outlet or something, um, you're gonna need to strip some wires. So good pair of wire strippers. These are also Klein Tools. These are, let's see, what are these? Husky. I think I have Husky and I think I've got uh, Stanley. That's another set back there, but the ones I keep in my tool bag are Husky. I believe I got these all as a set, and it's, it's really helpful to have some big ones, medium ones, and small ones. I would recommend getting all those in just a set. Chisel, good medium-sized chisel is really all you need. There are tons of different sizes, uh, but I just have, I mean, I do have a full set back here, but generally the one that I go to we're just kind of fixing stuff around the house, uh, I just go with a medium-sized one. I find that works great. Okay, a few more items. Level, if you're gonna be hanging anything, hanging a picture for your wife, for example, you're gonna want a level. Uh, this is a fairly small one, but what I do like about it is it's encased in metal, which keeps it from getting too banged up and keeps it like a nice smooth surface to use. Uh, I have a big one too, but generally this is the one I use and it fits nicely in the tool bag. Okay, also again, if you're gonna be hanging anything, uh, you need to be able to find the studs. Uh, this is the Zircone A100, kind of the standard stud finder. Okay, another tool that is super useful is the impact driver. This is the DeWalt brushless one. Oh man, this thing is fantastic. Okay, here's another thing that I saw on a job site that I was on. Uh, all the guys had this long guy, long one with the, just a Phillips head on the end and I didn't even know these things existed. So they, they generally don't come in these kits like this guy. Uh, usually in these, you just get the short ones or just the bits, you know, they go, they fit into here and change out. I found this super handy for things that, you know, especially like my kids' toys. <laughs> they have like a long plastic hole that you can't get, you know, you can only get like a normal screwdriver in, but this sort of stuff is too fat to get into. This is really handy to have. So uh, this is typically just pick it up separately for just a few bucks. And then of course your drills, I mean your uh, your drill bits and your, I'm blanking, screw bits. What do you call those things? Drill bits? Yeah. I hope that was helpful. Um, highlighting all 41 of my most useful tools. So I've been curating this bag over several years. I was also going to include uh, my favorite tools that I use for working on a car, kind of a mechanic starter set, but there's just too many tools to cover. So I'm gonna cover that in a separate video. I'll put a link to that up top. Be sure and check that out. All right, thanks for watching guys.